All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews. And this is my manga haul for August 2021. I've been trying to do a little bit better about not picking up trash and sticking only with the stuff that's really in my wheelhouse, stuff I've really wanted to pick up, and I think I did that this month. And per requests in the comments of some of my previous manga haul videos, I'm going to do a lot of flip, flipping through these, talking a little bit about the mangaka and the title, uh, the time when they came out. So it'll be a little bit more in-depth than usual. But at any rate, let's get into it. All right, let's start off with the horror master of manga himself, Hino Hideshi. Uh, many people have been asking why I haven't done a Hino Hideshi profile video yet, and it's because I want to do it right, and I keep on running across so many weird titles that are outside of his, like, normal wheelhouse of rotting, maggot-infested, decaying flesh, although we do have some of that here. And I picked up this at a local pop-up bookstore event here in Koenji near my house. This is Gogora Dodora, and this is a science fiction release, not horror. So I thought that was pretty weird. Um, we can see the series here. Actually, I have this too. Um, this follows a brother and sister who get entangled in this kind of science fiction adventure, and there's all kinds of things. Wild trees, um, aliens, space, time slipping or time travel, but as we get into it, we do start to see, I mean, this, the style is a little bit cartoony, a little bit like it was trying to, he's trying to fit some sort of 80s trends at the time, but we can see as we get into it, some more of his classic imagery. So that is Gogo, Gogora Dotora. I also picked up this by Hino, my local bookstore. It was super cheap. Was, oh, look at that. Uh, Kojima Miyako ad. I think this is from the early 2000s, around 2003, that this was released. And this is Tayoden, a biography of Daybreak by Hino Hideshi. It's set in kind of Paleolithic times. So there's a mammoth hunt going on where humans and Monkey people, not to be confused with monkeys, they call them engine. So monkey people, or these bipedal monkeys, are at war with each other. That's as far as I've gotten so far, and it is dense. Another reason why I picked this up is because in the back, it has, of course, because of its, this big anthology thing, a long interview with the man himself, Hino Hideishi. So I thought this would be a great resource for later. And this is another reason why it's taken me so long to make the profile video, because I keep on finding more and more stuff in the back of these manga. Interviews. There's the man himself as a child. And check this out. This is the final reason why it's taken me so long. These are all of his releases from his calm release in 1967 up to 2001. Just 2001. Look at all of that. So you can see why it's difficult for me to sit down and do just a Hino profile when there's so much stuff out there. Also, in August, I ran into this, and this was also at the pop-up bookstore. This is Mienai. Akuma, or the Unseen Demon. Who is that? This is a Furoku release from 1969. It looks like Makino Kazuko was the writer. It's about this young girl, a third grader in elementary school actually, who during summer vacation goes to visit her sister in Tokyo alone. Upon arriving, she has a nightmare about it, the trip, and then upon arriving, the sister is nowhere to be found, but the husband is there, the mother-in-law is there, and also a neighbor boy. There's, but there's strange noises coming, but the sister's not there. And there's strange noises coming from the attic at night. 
So, of course, she teams up with the neighbor boy and they the mystery ensues. Horrible, horrible print. Not very easy on the eyes, especially some of the ads in the back. These are illustrations submitted by readers. But I, that's kind of some rough copy. But this was a fun, quick read. Getting into the real stuff now, guys. Check this out. My third pickup, third title I've scored from Morikanda. This is uh, Kaiki Kaeru Hime. This is the uh, strange frog princess. And it is wild, gory, disgusting, and autographed by the man himself, just like my other copy. Um, the first story starts off with a girl who is bullied at school and called a pig. But the classmates convince her to go on a camping trip because they tell her that one of the boys has a crush on her. Um, during the camping trip, they decide to gut and behead a pig. Then they, of course, stuff that pig's head in the entrails onto the girl to humiliate her. The rest of the story is her getting her revenge. And there is a wild twist at the end. It's not all about her. Of course, we have the Kairu story. We have uh, some wild stuff in here. Whoa. The frog girl, the frog princess story is wild. A lot of these stories have to do with uh, teasing, and bullying, and revenge. And also there's a very wild... Uh, cult story in here as well so if you can ever find anything morikanda and you're into grotesque violent decrepit horror look for it pick it up ah <sighs> these are represses from the 19 early 70s uh ijima ichiro this is i married a gorilla gorilla to no keikon and this one is the kyofu no Nubo, or the oh, horror tits. <laughs> I don't know, man. I haven't read this one yet. But I Married a Gorilla is a wild one, too. And it's not all about gorilla love. It's also uh, has so, so many shorts in it. The first one, this is about the bizarre spider story. Um, I talked about this in my Koenjishan Reviews Instagram page. I did a little video on it. So go over there if you want to learn more about that. It is wild. Um, the second story is really wild, too. The second story is a science fiction space horror story about some kind of Star Trek-like space travelers exploring new planets. They come across a planet that is just home to a bunch of Haribo bodies and these men traveling years alone in space get seduced by the women and proceed to get wasted and have an orgy. Meanwhile, the captain's outside trying to investigate around the scene. He comes around this placard saying that these are not women, but actually robots, and to stay away because they have rebelled. And in our last panel here, one of the robot women pops up and grabs his gun. You can imagine what happens from there. This story is about a space alien that comes to Earth it cannot be killed unless it eats human flesh. So that's awesome. I really want to read this one, but I'm saving this one. Again, these are represses. Impossible to find the originals, and they're scattered throughout so many weeklies, I believe. But I'm going to try my best at some point. Here we have Kojima Miyako. I have five of her other releases, and I ran across this one online. This is her first release, or first popular horror release. This is Kodomo Jigoku, or Children's Hell, and uh, it is great. If you have a chance to pick up some of her stuff. She's in the new magazine coming out. I forget the title. Maybe I'll try to pop it down below right here. Um, this com comes out t today, actually. 
um, September 1st, 2021, where she's interviewed and Umez is interviewed. And in it, I heard that Umez talks about releasing his first release in 26 years. So I have that on pre-order. I can't wait to receive that. And the first story here is about a girl that uh, is beautiful by day. But once she takes off her makeup, she looks like this and men run away from her. And that details. And there's a bunch of others. It's just an anthology of all of a bunch of her early horror stories. Great stuff. Moving on, I got some Edo Guru and just straight up Edo stuff. This, of course, is Mario Suehiro. Great cover. Great color on the inside here. This is the panorama of Kitan Island. I don't know what the official English is. Great. It begins with a fireworks festival. Um, less guro than usual and not as hardcore ero as usual, but of course there is murder and sex and everything that you expect in a Maduro release. So that's cool. Then I scored this, which is awesome. This is a actual hardcover release of Tsuki no Hikari, The Moonlight by Hanawa. And it has an embossed cover. Unfortunately, there's a little scratch on that side. Embossed back cover. And the inside cover is just dope. The space alien there, some of his classic characters, Frankenstein's monster, werewolf. Look at those are so cool. And uh, I'd actually bookmarked one thing in here. I mean, it's classic Eroguro from Hanawa, but there's one story in here that is wild. Check this out. Look at those characters. That does not look like Hanawa to me. Not at all. Who does that look like to you? Well, of course, I already have this. This is not for my haul. This is Madara no Tamago by Hino Hideshi. And if we look in here, we can see Some similarities, right? Let me go back for a second. What did these kids find in the Hanawa book? Wild, right? Love the homage. Love the homage. So that was a score. And that was a wild connection. I hadn't even read that yet. I was just kind of flipping through it last night, prepping for this video. And I'm like, oh crap, I know that. So these are a couple Erohon I picked up at the Ero Manga. Not Erohon. Ero Manga I picked up at the pop-up shop. I picked this up because, you know, I'm not really into the erotica. But this one's called uh, Man Killer, Otoko Goroshi. So I thought, man, this could might be a, like a good mystery or murder story. But... He starts off with some uh, rape by a serviceman of a Japanese woman and then she ends up having a child and it's not Japanese, it's half. So there's some weird racism going on in it. There's some rape in it, but there is some murder as well. Um, the father kills the rapist and then later the father kills the wife and then the girl ends up alone and on the streets as a prostitute. That was about as much as I could stomach but uh, it is wild. Then I had picked up this just for the cover. This, so this is from 1977. So you can imagine some of those themes being prevalent during that time. A very misogynistic area. I mean, it's hard for me to like condone any of it. But I thought it would be more murder mystery. It's a lot of erotica. And then I picked up this one simply for the cover. And also it's by 
Dati Matsumoto, who's a famous Ero mangaka. So I thought, you know, maybe it'd be nice to have it around. But I'll tell you what, it is not, man. It is wild and it is way too sexy for me. And uh, I also tried to read some of this and it's just about basically about bondage and sexual assault. At any rate, let's move on. All right, let's get into some Nagai Go. Of course, everyone loves Nagai Go because of the Devilman series. And I usually don't pick up these little bunkos, but I did grab these because this is Mao Dante. Mao means Satan or the Devil, and then Dante is Dante. And this is his precursor to Devilman. This came out in 71, I believe. It was discontinued in the middle because the magazine, the weekly that, or monthly that it was being published in went out of business. So it only went up to two volumes. It's easy to read these on the train and stuff. So I grabbed them and read them and it is great. Uh, I never read Mao Dante despite being a huge Devilman fan. In fact, I'm such a big Devilman fan that when I was... 18, the second tattoo I got was the devil man lines on his chest that extend from his chest to his back where his wings come out of. That's how big of a devil man fan was. Incidentally, my first tattoo was Kuchi Kuti, the character by Robert Williams, the lowbrow artist, because I was really into lowbrow art at that time. Um, anyways, sci-fi horror. The same kind of play with the duality between being human and being a demon as in devil man so he took that theme from mao and applied it to devil man but i believe at that time the studios because they were making an anime series as well they wanted to lighten up on the violence a little bit for the devil man series to make it more palatable for kids you know he's it's pretty gore, but if you've seen the Devil Man series, it is not tame at all. Um, our protagonist is summoned to the Himalayas, where he's tricked into releasing a demon from the ice, and then that demon, of course, eats him, tears him apart, and eats him, as demons do. And then he turns into the demon, which we find out later. I do not want to ruin it for you, but it is fun, fun, fun. I read this, both of these in one day just because they were so fun. And also, I was taking the train that day. This is wild, wild, wild. This is from the two aughts. Okay. And in 2016, they made an OVA of it, like a, a live action TV show of it. This is Keiko Kamen. This one's Keiko Kamen too. Uh, Google it. I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll put a link down below. Google it on YouTube because episode one is on YouTube. It is wild. It is sexy. And just like in the manga, she is naked. So uh, the stories are, the, the live action is very much comedy. And the situations are always like young girls being sexually harassed, bullied, and abused at school. And then Keiko Kamen comes in and kicks some butt. But she does it whilst naked. Wild, wild stuff. Check out the YouTube. You will crack up because it's so bad. And I can't believe it came out in 2016. I was watching some of it last night. And I'm like, this didn't come out in like 1995? What the hell? Then we have Kuro no Shishi or The Black Lion by Nagai Go again. And uh, this, of course, is a kind of a, a period piece and dense. I will get into it at some point. But I have a lot on my plate right now. But it was, I mean, I think I picked it up for 300 yen, $3. So how could you not buy Nagai Go Black Lion for $3? Next, we have some Morohoshi Daijiro. And this, these ones I picked up this month. This I picked up the previous month. And actually, we have a Discord Koenji Shan Reviews. There's a link down below for that if you want to join us over there. And we did this for the book club. This is The Voice of Yomi. 
Yomi Kare no Koi. And this is, has four stories in it. Well, Yomi has a part one and part two. These are wild. They're great. I most of the, Some people are still reading it, so I haven't um, written my thoughts on it in our book club yet, but I am looking forward to hearing everyone else's thoughts on it. And it is a wild story. This is from the Yokai Hunter series, so there's always yokai and mysterious demons that come up and or mysterious creatures and, you know, uh, noroi or uh, curses. And man, this one is wild. And especially when you catch the, there's one part where she's eating these creatures. They almost look like frogs, wild stuff. So I enjoyed this so much, I started trying to hunt down some of his other stuff. And I wanted to try to find some stuff that was different from the Yokai Hunter series. So first, for about 12 bucks, I found this Complex City. This is Morohoshi's uh, science fiction release. And I believe, I'm gonna double check this. All except for one story are from the late 70s and 1980, but we do have the 1971st Calm release. Remember, Calm was the monthly made, distributed, and produced and distributed by Tezuka Osamu. And uh, we'll get to that first in a second. Um, this is a story about a si girl who arrives at a city where robots and humans hate each other and they're about to go to war and uh, the city is divided. Of course, it starts off with some sexy stuff, which was probably not necessary. But uh, while she is there, they go to war. Humans versus robots. Um, the second story is about a, some people who their plane crashes in the middle of the Sahara Desert and they run across a giant can of saba or mackerel which they need to open in order to survive. It's a wild story. And then moving on to the final, the final story which I really bought this for this, the 1970 Calm release, Junko's Threat, which is a sad story about a girl who gets caught up with the Yakuza after having nude photos taken of, taken of her and then gets in a relationship with a Yakuza member who's like a weed dealer and then her life is just in turmoil. It is just such a sad story and she and the way he writes her, she's always just so sad and abused. And man, it is a heavy one. But it was important to read to understand Morohoshi better. Next, I got Mad Men. This is Morohoshi still, of course, all of these are. And this is set in New Guinea. Japanese uh, family of researchers go to New Guinea and all hell breaks loose. I haven't read it yet. I just kind of skimmed, read the first six or seven pages. I always try to do that lately when I pick up new stuff. It's just read the first five or six pages to see how I like it and see where I want to put it in my reading order. But I am definitely going to get to this. Also quite different from the Yokai Hunter series. And then we have this one, which is Mumen Moku Tai Kobo Ten, which is a period piece. It seems to be set in China. And the color at the beginning is awesome. Although it could be just some mythical place because I don't think they ever have phoenixes flying around in China. And man, this is dense. There is a lot going on in this one. So... When I have a vacation again, I think I'm going to have to get more deeply into Morohoshi. This month, I also picked up the full set of 14 uh, Umez, Umez Zukazuo's um, last long series he did in 1995. Um, upon hearing that he was going to release his first release in 26 years, it sounds like maybe early next year. I felt like I had to pick this up. I actually had the crappy, a couple of these crappy bunkos sitting around, which I don't like. I always say this, I don't like them, but they're good for the train. But I've been putting it off because I don't have the, didn't have the full set. And I ran across this whole set on Merikari for 3,000 yen. So I was like, I'll just pick up the Tankobo set and uh, start reading it. I read two of them last night and it is wild. I love Chicken John. 
That's all I can say. I love Chicken John. Um, if you haven't seen the inside or know the story so much, um, they have, it's set in a time where they're, most animals are extinct except for like rats and flies and shit like that. And uh, food is grown in labs. The chicken breast factory, the chicken factory is a huge popular corporation, giant corporation. And one of the scientists discovers that something different starts growing, something with an eye and continues to grow and continues to grow until we come across Chicken John. Chicken John is not your normal monster either. Chicken John is smart, but violent. Chicken John can creep and can, is it at the back here? Maybe it's in volume two and can learn. Oh, there we go. Chicken John studying biology, philosophy, and many of the ways of the humans. Awesome stuff. And then at the pop-up bookstore event, I also ran across this. This is an introduction to horror, Kyofu e no Shotai, based on Umez's Kazuo. Uh, Umezu Kazuo or Umezu's works. So it kind of goes through the step-by-step -step of how horror stories, manga horror stories are developed. There's explanations in here. There's comments in here. So when I do break down one day and do an Umez profile, then this will be very, very useful information-wise, although it is dense. Some of his notes on how he takes notes for stories. And they have one manga in here, Rojin, which he, which they, the publishers, insert to kind of give you an idea. It's about a boy who finds an old man in the hole in the middle of a park and what ensues from there. I'll tell you, it's not nice. Here, I'll fast forward to one of the not nice parts. Boy, boys with rocks are always dangerous. So that's pretty cool. That will be a good resource later down the road. Some of his sketches in the back here. This is from God's Left Hand, Devil's Right his sketches, and then the, the unfinished panels, and then the fully finished panels. So that's pretty cool. Finally, after finishing reading Wooden Mortared Kingdom, the 20th anniversary book on Gato, I felt the need to buy some Tsuge Yoshiharu and Tsuge Tado stuff. You know the famous brothers and uh the first thing i got this tsuge yoshi uh yoshiharu this is not a manga this is his uh, travel diary of the poor and i believe he travels through kyushu this is in the 60s late 60s i believe and just through these poor villages taking photos and writing about it trying to capture a slice of life of that time, which was, looks very interesting. Then, I got this as well, the Hishisurume Katame. I don't know the English title. I mean, I'm not familiar with a lot of the Gato stuff, guys. I'm sorry. And uh, this is also Tsuge Yoshiharu. Um, I've only read the first portion up to here, so, so far it's a couple guys on a fishing trip trying to find um, a place to stay because the local place was flooded, and uh, I just need to get into that more later. And then his brother, who I prefer so far, is uh, Tarao, Tsuge Tarao, 
And this is so good. This is the Kinakoya no Obasan, or the lady from the Kinako shop. Kinako is like a, a soybean paste or powder. And uh, this one contains a uh, trash market, which is about the Baiketsu system or the blood bank, blood selling system that preyed on the poor in the 60s. There's an awesome, um, the comics journal website has an awesome article on there that talks all about it. I read that whole thing in like at the same time in tandem while reading Trash Market inside here. And Trash Market is available in English. It is great. I definitely recommend reading it. And if you do read it, that story, that one individual story, then I recommend uh, reading that the Comics Journal article about the tie between manga, cause, uh, Mizuki, and uh, Sketaro, and the Baiketsu system or blood bank system. Nearing the end here, guys, I promise. Uh, next, I got Otomo's Sayonara Nippon. That cover is so awesome. I mean, Otomo, to be honest, I mean, uh, he's, of course, Akira is Akira. Everybody loves Akira. If it wasn't for Akira, who knows if I'd even be here today, living in Japan for 18 years. But it starts off with a band, a bunch of, you know, they're not popular, not good. Um, well, maybe they're good, but they're not popular at all. They're struggling artists. And then they, uh, the local bar lady invites them to do backup for to pay off some of their bar tab backup for her. And she turns out to be an excellent singer. And then it goes on from there. So I don't want to spoil anything for you. And I also got uh, Eisbahn or Eisbahn in English, which I think in German means ice, ice rink. Right? I want sometimes I'll get something a little bit lighter. This is by Nishimura Tsuchika. And I like the art. It's really light and it's a light read. It's more current. First story is about a slippery road and some nostalgia for high school. Second story is about a struggling writer. And um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to read something a little bit different. So that, my friends, is my manga haul for August 2021. Thanks to everyone who subs, likes, shares, joins our Discord group, comments. You know, like, it's really cool to have like a nice community of people with like similar interests, all hanging out together, giving recommendations. So come join us in our Discord. And I look forward to next time. And until then, matane.